This was brought to you by The Vine on YouTube and The Storyteller on Facebook. Eventually, my dad and mom moved out of the country to Mesa and into a townhouse. That was the last time I was ever to live in the country as a kid. I went back to that town when I was 17 with my little sister, her friend, and one of my friends. We visited the old school and sat on the bleachers while we smoked a joint. I stared out at those lights like I did when I lived there. I remembered how I wanted the excitement those lights brought. I realized the innocence I had lost because of wanting those lights off in the distance. Ruining my father's opportunity to work on his boss's dairy. With encouragement from my mom to move to Mesa, my father agreed, and that was to be the beginning of the end for me. My father and mother had no idea what was to come, and my plans for the excitement of late nights and city life. To me this was like Santa Claus visiting on Christmas Eve, sneaking out at night, and running around with all of my friends while getting drunk and high. There were times when we would all come back to my house and climb through my sister's window to get into our townhouse. We climbed onto the roof, above the laundry room, opened their window, and rolled over my little sister's legs while she was asleep in bed. I would steal alcohol and cigarettes to impress all of my friends because they thought I was cool. What seemed to be the truth wasn't the truth in the end. I would steal clothes from Kmart, taking shoes and leaving my old pair in the box the new ones came in. Walking out of grocery stores with a 12-pack of beer without being seen. I would steal alcohol at least two and three times a day when drinking. I was good at it until I began to steal alcohol while I was so drunk I could barely stand up. My seventh grade teacher was talking to me once at one store just before I did a beer run. He knew automatically who it was and had no problem telling the cashier. When he heard the alarm go off as I ran out of an emergency exit located at the back of the store. He was at the checkout counter when the alarm went off too. The next day, I found out an officer had stopped by the house asking for me, wanted me to call the police station the next morning, and warning me that he was now watching me. The police couldn't press charges because I wasn't caught in the act, and there weren't any witnesses. That wasn't warning enough for me, I still stole alcohol until I finally got caught. While living in the townhouse, I can remember messing with the security guards by busting water sprinklers as I rode bikes over them. They would chase me and my friends, trying to catch us. All of my friends were rounded up by the security guards and warned if they did anything else, they would be kicked out of the townhouse community. I was never caught, and the security officers wanted my friends to knock me out, telling them who I was and where I lived, but they didn't tell them anything. I had a girlfriend who lived behind the townhouses in a house. Late at night, we would walk to her house to see if she wanted to hang out with us. Everyone would end up at my place by the end of the night. My parents never really paid much attention to what we kids were doing. My friends and I would sit around in my room getting drunk and throwing darts at one another. We wanted to see who would flinch first. My girlfriend was crazy and somewhat of a slut, but I never slept with her, and I have no idea why I didn't. I found out later, she slept with almost every friend I had, and I had a lot of friends. I will never regret having the friends I had, but maybe some of the bad behavior could have been avoided. It took what it took to get where I'm at now. I had my two friends that lived next door, who were brothers, and lived only with their mom. She always stayed in her room, and didn't have any furniture in the apartment. We would play Dungeons and Dragons, get high and drunk. I had another shifty friend who lived by the pool, and his dad was a military man. He was always kicking his son out of the apartment for drinking and bad behavior. He took a punch to the face by stepping into it when the punch
lunch was meant for me. The apartment complex next to ours was overrun with skaters, and we didn't get along with skaters. It was a skater and stoner thing. We had long hair and listened to heavy metal. They had a punk rocker look and listened to the cramps. Whenever we saw skaters, we ganged up on them, beating them up, and they did the same to us. I had a friend who was nicknamed Burger whose mom raised him on her own. I never met Burger's mom but knew he was the only child. You could tell his relationship with his mom was good. He had a job and always checked up on her. Burger worked at Taco Bell and bought his car on his own eventually because he was responsible. He still loved to play a lot. Once he burned his leg with lighter fluid, trying to show off for girls, doing blue flames. He laid on his back, threw his legs over his head, and lit a lighter in front of his but while he farted. It was supposed to cause a blue flame because of his fart. Instead, his leg had lighter fluid on it and caught on fire. Though Burger was a goof, I enjoyed being around him. Something happened at Burger's house concerning my next door neighbor friends. The oldest brother had gotten involved with gangs and was visiting Burger's house after Burger had moved away from the complex to Chandler. While visiting, he got into trouble in Chandler where Burger now lived. He had to climb out of Burger's window, running off because people were looking for him at the front door. I had another friend, blonde headed, long hair, and a musician who was into glam rock, like dressing up and using men's makeup. He would imitate Vince Neil from Motley Crue, and his other friend in his band imitated Nikki Six, another member of Motley Crue. When stealing stereos, my glam rock friend wouldn't help, but he loved being the lookout. He liked the adventure, but didn't want to be the one stealing the stereos. Another friend was a nomad whose mom constantly made threats of sending him off to live with his father. He would always call 1-900 numbers and cause trouble at home. He only came over to stay the night just to play Dungeons and Dragons, get high and drunk. During my wandering days, he let me sneak into his room to sleep. He eventually joined Job Corp and disappeared, but hopefully that straightened him out because his drug addiction got bad. After destroying my parents' rental history and causing problems in the neighborhood, becoming my dad's excuse for losing his job on the dairy, we moved to a smaller town next to Chandler called Gilbert. Gilbert was infested with gangs and drugs, and it was the town where I did the beer run in front of my old 7th grade teacher, who was at the checkout counter. I was drunk, walking down the main street of Gilbert, and got into another fight. A couple of Mexicans walked up on me and my friends, some things were said, and we were fighting in a parking lot. From then on I had to watch my back. I now had enemies while I lived in that town. My sister's new boyfriend and I had become friends, and he was crazy. He cut a shotgun down to a sawed-off shotgun, but the barrel was cut too short. The gun was useless, but when he got drunk or high he walked around shooting at trees with it. One night, he was by the library shooting at trees, and sirens were racing toward the library. Then he was behind our apartments shooting at street lights, sirens raced by again, and my sister's boyfriend would escape their grasp each time. We moved back to Mesa, and he came with us, but freaked out, chasing my friends with a meat cleaver. My dad gave him a ride back to Gilbert, and that was the last time I ever saw him. He was the one who got me interested in the occult and devil worshippers, and had a book called the Necronomicon, which I later found out was a fake. I thought that it was fascinating because of the spells and incantations in it. I also became curious about Aleister Crowley. It was pretty messed up, living in Gilbert and walking to Mesa to visit my friends. I slept on rooftops in empty apartments and was still seeing the girl I was seeing while living in the townhouse. The night we moved out of the townhouse and moved to Gilbert, she told me that she had slept with my friend, the one who had the military dad, on New Year's Eve, and I still dated her after she told me. I would visit Mesa, steal beer, and hang out with my friends all night. While walking around I would take the beer out of their cases, packing them into my pants and shirt, so they weren't noticeable. The beer would cause bulges, and make it hard for me to walk. I would lose all of the beer by the end of the night, passing out on a rooftop, or in an empty apartment we broke into. I stayed gone for weeks doing this. 
We lived in a two-bedroom apartment, and one of my friends had befriended my parents. They allowed him to live with us, while I was going between Mesa and Gilbert to hang out with him and my sister's boyfriend. Drinking with the neighbors, and then my mom started letting me drink in front of her. Times were getting bad, my dad was no longer working on dairy farms, he was a milk tester. He traveled to different dairy farms, with a crew and a camper trailer. Going days without sleep, and staying gone for weeks at a time, to make sure the bills were paid. After the fight with the Mexicans, someone knocked on our apartment door. My friend who lived with us, looked out of the window to see who it was, one of the Mexicans from the fight shattered the window in his face. He went to the hospital, had to get the glass out of his eyes, and had to wear gauze over them until they healed. The cops caught the kids and brought them to our house, for us to identify, the night the fight happened. They knew where we lived, so my friends and I started keeping guns at the apartment. I had a 410 rifle hidden in the bedroom, and one of my sister's old high school friends had brought a handgun over, and we hid it in one of the heat vents. My older sister's boyfriend kept his sawed-off shotgun at our apartment, because it was getting hot around his place. My sister's boyfriend and I would do Robotussum DM, before they took the codeine out, to get high. We would steal the family size bottles, and chug the whole thing down at once. We always went to this bridge on Main Street, in Gilbert, where power lines ran over and jumped up into the air. While in the air we touched each other's head. The power lines running over the flood canal ditch caused an electrical shock, while touching another person on the bridge. After busted windows, guns hidden in the apartment, kids in and out of our place, parties all the time, and shooting the 410 out of the window. The landlord decided that we had to move, so we moved back to Mesa. Before leaving the apartment, we busted holes in the walls, out of spite for kicking us out. During our move to Mesa, I was high on Robotussum, and puking from the window of the Dodge Dart. Getting to Mesa I was high sitting under a light pole, my sister's boyfriend was higher than a kite, and had a meat cleaver. I had been arrested once for shoplifting, sentenced to community service, and classes for underage drinking. I did my community service at an elementary school, and then at a park. I went to the underage drinking class for a month, and never went to any meetings. We moved to an apartment complex right next to the townhouses that we had lived in before. The apartments with the skaters we used to get into fights with. I used the skater kids as an excuse for being dazed and confused next to the pool, over in the townhouses where we had lived before. Three weeks after moving back to Mesa, I was stealing alcohol again until my parents decided I should go to Illinois. They felt it was best I stay there for a while, and I was doing better to some extent. I would either be at my aunt's house down the street, or at my grandparents' house. I was still stealing cigarettes in Illinois, but I wasn't drinking. I stole my cigarettes because I got into a fight with my uncle, and I didn't want to take any more cigarettes from my grandpa. I guess my parents missed me, deciding it was time for me to come home, so they came to Illinois to get me. This was brought to you by The Vine on YouTube and The Storyteller on Facebook. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.